Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, hello, I'm Debbie and I make art videos. So I'm back, I'm back from my trip abroad. Yay. I was in England for a couple of weeks, and then I was in Germany for the rest of the time, and it was a really busy time, so I didn't really get a lot of time to sit down and do any artwork. So today I thought we would look through a couple of my photos and make some little gouache studies, and yeah, let's delve into it. This first picture is from our trip to Kassel in the heart of Germany, like quite central. And Kassel used to be the capital of the region, which is now called Hesse, which is like the German version of states. And this was a beautiful day in May, and we spent the whole day at these palace grounds, and it was just unbelievably green just beyond green and usually i'm not a fan of these kinds of greens i am more of a moody green girl i like olive greens and chartreuse greens and dark aqua greens so i love this photo because it really reminded me of how green May was in Europe. It was just unreal. <laughs> and and because I was coming from Saskatchewan and just leaving winter behind, it, it just seemed miraculous, quite honestly. Anyhow, I thought I would do this picture both because I loved the framing of it, but also because I should practice using these kind of like greens that in my head seem unnatural but in reality sometimes it really looks that way these kind of like crayon box greens sometimes those greens do exist in nature and i should learn to use them so landscapes are not something that i tend to draw and so i am very unfamiliar with how to tackle them and I found it quite challenging because I feel like if you're not gonna draw every individual leaf, you kind of have to find a way to make the forms look leafy. And I think that comes down to brush strokes. And I'm not really a painter, I'm still like learning. And so I don't really know how to command or get the gesture that I want out of the paint strokes. So because of that, I found this really challenging, but I'm glad I tried it out and it's a good little study and I learned a lot. The second image was from a village called Bibbury in the Cotswolds region in England. And it's a very picturesque town and you'll see it on Pinterest boards all over the place. And this was uh, just a, a beautiful little corner of the village. We walked up this little hill and there was this cherry tree, like a cherry blossom tree. And the cherry blossoms were falling down to the ground. And I loved this, the way this vine was crawling up the tree and what i wanted to get right in this painting is to get the shadows and the the light relationships between the darks and the lights I'm, i struggled because this is not something i'm good at but i think at least i got the contrast to be high enough for it to read i still don't think i got the shadows shapes right but i am happy with you know, it's a start. It's a start to understanding these things. I unintentionally, or uh, let's just say subconsciously, decided on kind of a focus for each little study. And I think that helped me 
stay focused, but also just like not overwhelm myself because, you know, I've taken a long break from painting and I just kind of gave myself one little task to focus on for each painting and that really helped me out. So maybe that's something that you can incorporate into your art practice, you know, just like say, I'm just going to try to get this one color in this one region right, you know, because it, especially in landscapes, there's like so much going on. So for me, I was just trying to get a good enough contrast because I, I suffer from um, never pushing things far enough. So in a way, this was like maybe too far, but at least it was far enough. <laughs> but anyways, I thought that that was um, a subconscious but good intentioned way to approach, you know, maybe your studies too. This last photo is from the Cotswolds in England and we were driving through, we had rented a car with my husband and my mother-in-law and the sun was setting and we saw these sheep just lined up in a row so we stopped the car, we pulled over and took a few photos and I really wanted to kind of get that time of day where the light is kind of hazy like my photo isn't really good but i think it it is pretty representative of what the light quality was like and i liked how hazy everything was and kind of like washed in this sort of like yellow and i decided to go more washy with this so it took me a little bit of time because i had to wait for the layers to dry i really needed to get a hair dryer up in my studio but it also gave me time to think about like the next step and it's not like completely successful but I think I got the kind of romantic quality let's say that I was trying to go for. I still have problems with representing the leaf shapes. I was thinking about it a bit more and I think it's that I'm such a line person. I'm really more of a line artist and because of that, I gravitate more to forms that have more distinct outlines. So I like drawing trees, but really I like drawing naked trees. So drawing trees with leaves on them is quite hard for me. And drawing animals is easier and drawing humans is easier because you can see the skeleton underneath. Even when an animal is furry, you can kind of see the skeleton underneath, if that makes sense. So these kind of more ambiguous natural shapes that trees make is really quite tricky and obviously it's something that I need to practice. I really liked how this little guy turned out and uh, I think the sheep read as sheep and this was a this was a really fun exercise and I I hope I'll do more of these with you guys going through my travel photos because I have a lot. <laughs> I feel like this is like a really good way to reconnect with your holiday or your travels or places that you've been even that you've taken photos and I think that it's probably best if you don't wait too long in between uh, the trip or the place that you've been you know even on the weekend or the park or something and the studies that you make just to like really connect with the feelings that that place gave you or what you liked about that place and what why you took that picture because sometimes we take so many pictures and then we don't realize what was special about it and memory is fleeting right so I think that closing that gap between working on something that you intended to take a photo for and the time that you make the artwork is probably key anyways I will see you very shortly oh and I had a question to ask yeah camera um one question i got these two sets while i was away so one is karanda nash so that's neo color two and then the other one is a uh, lucas gouache set so uh, let me know in the comments below what one you'd like to see me use in a video 
I will make a video of both of them, but which one would you like to see first? Anyhow, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you soon at the next one. Bye now.